crises that major economies have had are not simply solvable by economics. That is, generally speaking, the economic answers are relatively clear. And it leaves you wondering, well, how come if an economic answer is relatively clear, uh, it doesn't happen? You know, there's some economists who study public policy in the context of optimal policy making. I've never been one of those. Politics is very much uh, an important part of economics. Uh, rather, the problem is really uh, a politics problem. The growth stoppages I look at in the book are all examples of economies whose political institutions didn't keep up with the economics around them. Now, it's fashionable for the US to talk about decline. Uh, as a result of this, as the looming fiscal crisis and the effects on growth. And I don't know if you remember the scene in The Christmas Carol of the ghost of Christmas future. Anybody remember this? So Scrooge uh, is with the ghost of Christmas future who simply points and he sees the tombstone with his name on it and he asks the specter, are these the shadows of things that are or the shadow of things that might be? And I'm going to argue they're the shadow of things that might be and in fact, they are imminently fixable. Now, how will this work out? There are two ways it could work out. Uh, if I were a pessimist, which I have never been, uh, I would be like the lady. Anybody know who the lady is? None of you are murder mystery fans? This is Agatha Christie. <laughs> Agatha Christie wrote in Then There Were None. The movie version is called Ten Little Indians. And in Then There Were None, there was a mansion classic Christie setting, somebody's killed, freaks people out, as usually that does at a dinner party. And then they get calm again, and then somebody else is killed. And then again, and then again, and again, and then there were none. And that's the way great powers generally stumble, is by those kind of thousand cuts. But there's a more optimistic ending to this play of changing rules. I assume you know who the other gentleman is. You all have tons of $100 bills in your pocket. You see him all the time. But Mr. Franklin at the Constitutional Convention, when asked at the end what he thought, said he'd been staring at George Washington's chair the whole time. And on the back of Washington's chair was a sun. And it had worried him the whole time. He just couldn't figure out was it rising or setting. And he concluded that it was rising. Great powers often stumble. That's a different statement than great powers must stumble. There's a way out and you should be optimistic. Uh -huh.